What's up YouTube? Have you ever wondered about the Transform Studio and if being designer on the iPad? Well, that is what we are here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen, I'm a media design educator, and today we're talking all about the Transform Studio in Affinity Designer on the iPad. We've been working our way through all of the studios in Affinity Designer on the iPad, and we are almost to the end. So today we're talking about the Transform Studio, but if you're interested in the other studios, go ahead and make sure that you check out the Intro to Affinity Designer playlist right here. So the Transform Studio, I think, is one of the most underrated studios in Affinity Designer. I think a lot of people forget that it's there, or they look at it and they're not quite sure how to use it. So I hope that I can enlighten you about the Transform Studio today. This studio features heavily in my course about isometric illustration using Affinity Designer on the iPad. So if you're interested in learning more about using the Transform Studio for isometric illustration, go ahead and check out that course, which will be linked in the description below. Okay, there's a lot to learn here, so let's go ahead and get started learning about the Transform Studio. Okay. So here we are in Affinity Designer on the iPad now, and we're going to go ahead and get the Transform Studio. We're going to go all the way almost to the bottom on the studios on the right hand side, and we're going to find the little square within a square. It's right below the text studio, and so we'll just tap on that. When we do that, we're going to see a bunch of different options of what we are able to transform. Now, we can only transform things if we actually have them selected. So let me go ahead and using my move tool, I'm just going to select these objects and I'm going to move them together to illustrate the first options that we have in the transform studio. The first options that we have are order options and these should be pretty familiar to anyone who's worked with different design programs. If you've worked with something like Illustrator or PowerPoint or almost anything, there's always a stacking order. Let's say I wanted this speech bubble to be all the way to the back. I'm just going to select this first option, which is to move it all the way to the back. So it moves behind everything else. And we can see this on the layer studio. If we go to layer studio, we can now see that the call out is actually on the bottom. So all we're doing is we're just changing the layer order, which we could do from the layer studio, but we can also do it from the transform studio. Now, of course, we can also move it all the way to the front, which is the one on the far right. That brings it back to where it was. And then the other two options are to move one back and to move one forward. So that just moves it one thing forward and it only moves it one thing forward in the layers stack, not necessarily if it's overlapping. So if, for example, if I drag my yellow one out here, and then I go to my speech bubble, go back to my transform studio, and I say I want to move one back. It doesn't look like anything happened. It did change. If we go to the layer studio, we can see it's now behind the yellow one, but the yellow one isn't overlapping it, so we can't see. So I would have to hit go back again to get it all the way behind the purple one. So that's how you can have some control. Depending on what you're doing, it may be easier to use these controls, or it may be easier to actually use the controls within the layer panel. Okay, let's bring this to the front again. And then we have our flip and rotate options. So these are ones that you use all the time as a designer. So we can rotate. And you can see it's just rotating by 90 degrees. And you can do it forwards or you can do it backwards. And then there are the flip options. We can either flip along the vertical axis or we can flip along the horizontal axis. So as you can see, these are tools that you use a lot. So you'll want to be really familiar with getting in here to the Transform Studio and using those tools. A lot of times you can also do the same thing just using the Move tool. You can grab the Rotate tool here you can do a lot of different things just with the move tool, but you can get more precise when using the transform tool. Here we have the dimensions, and these dimensions actually control the actual width and height of the bounding box of the object. So if I wanna make it bigger, I can drag on this, and you can see these are currently linked together because this lock has a circle around it. If I unlock that and then adjust the height, I can adjust the height independent. So you may sometimes want things locked and sometimes want them unlocked. You just wanna make sure that you know whether that lock is on or not. So that's width and height, which you can of course control also with the move tool just by dragging from the handles. So this is just another way to do it. So next is position. This actually determines the X, Y coordinates on the document. So we can go ahead and drag to the X to move it on the horizontal axis, and we can drag on the Y to move it on the vertical axis. All of these that have circles, including the width and height, you can tap on to bring up the calculator interface so you can put in something directly. So if I wanted this to be on exactly 400, I can type in 400, Click OK and it moves. So these can be very helpful when you need to make very precise changes in something that you don't want to just kind of drag with the move tool to do. You want to do something that's very precise. The Transform Studio is a great place to do that. Next we have Rotation and Shear. And these are two of the things that feature a lot when you are working with isometric design. So you can rotate things very precisely here in small increments. 
which is a little easier to do than just using the move tool. And then of course, if you want something to rotate exactly, you can put in the exact amount here and rotate it. Then you have shear. So this will allow you to shear the object. And then below that, you see you have the option to determine the anchor point. So this determines the anchor point for using the transform studio. So let's say we wanted to rotate around the center instead of from the top left, we can go ahead and click on the center and then any of our rotations will happen relative to the center. So those are all the options on the main menu. Then there are two sub menus. The first one is going to be alignment options. And with these alignment options, we can actually align our objects together or to the artboard. So let me select on this square here and you can see I have options and I'm going to align to the artboard. So because there's only one thing selected now, it will always go to the artboard. So if I want to go all the way to the left of the artboard, I hit left. If I want to go in center, I hit center. If I want to go right, I hit right. Now I can't use this last option distribute because I only have one object selected. So we'll see how that works in a minute. Let me go ahead and line that to the left. Okay, so if this is really useful when you want to work with multiple objects. Let me go ahead and select this, and I will also select other objects as well. So with these objects selected, I can then go ahead and I can do things to the selection bounds. You can see here it's changed to selection bounds, and I can say go left, center, right, and that's based on the objects that I had selected. I can go back to what I had before by just turning off the alignment, and then it goes back to how it was before. If I have them aligned, you can see that then I have the option to change this to artboard if I want them all to also be in the artboard. So these options are super useful, and then we also have the option to distribute. So we can distribute horizontally, and that evens out the space between them. This is easiest to see if there's some more space So let's go ahead and distribute these horizontally. You can see that now the space between them is even. Now we can change that by turning off auto and then we can actually adjust how much space we want in between each one manually or by using the calculator interface. So let's say I want 25 between each of them. I can do that and adjust it. Let's say I wanted more. I could put in something like 50 and do that. So it's no longer based on what the selection was initially, it's just based on what you want it to be. But we can always switch it back to auto here. And then the same options apply for vertical alignment. So we can align them vertically to the top, to the middle, or to the bottom. This is very useful when you're working with the layout of a document. And of course, we also have a distribute option here. This is most useful if you're trying to align up a bunch of objects. So let's say we want them all to kind of be together. Say we were making like a menu or something. Go ahead and line them to the right and then distribute them vertically. So this works best if we have some space between them, select them all, align them to the right and distribute vertically. And then you know that that space between them is always going to be the same. And of course we have the option to have this be auto or we can control it ourselves as well. So very, very useful in layout design. You'll use this all the time, I think. I actually wish it were a little less buried than it is. I kind of wish it were its own studio instead of being within the transform studio. Okay, lastly, there is this constraints menu. And the constraints menu is really intended for people working in like UI and UX design. It allows you to pin objects into certain places. So if you have multiple artboards representing different sizes of screens, then you can pin things in certain places so that they adjust accordingly. I'm not going to go into all of this because I don't know how interested people are or how many people are using this for UI or UX design. So if you do want a video on constraints, go ahead and drop into the comments below and let me know that you're interested. And in the future, I can make a video just dealing with constraints if that's something people are interested in. And that basically sums up the Transform Studio. It's pretty straightforward because these are all things that you can do with other tools as well, but it's very, very useful to have this kind of precision when you are designing. All right, I hope you found this helpful to learn more about how to use all of these features in the Transform Studio. Like I said at the beginning, it's a really powerful studio that you can use to do a lot of things. If you have any questions, go ahead and drop those in the comments below, as well as if you have any comments or other things that you would like to see from this channel. Don't forget to check out my courses. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.